Thinking about self-publishing and don't know where to start? Join the Spa Girls each week for 30 minutes of honest advice, tips and resources. I'm Trudy J, and I am here with Shah Barrett. Hello. Wendy Vella. Hello. And no one else. Cheryl no one is else. not with us today. <laughs> <laughs> I got you all excited though. You oh, thought there yeah. was someone else. It's just us. Just the, the three without Last the share. Years. I'm sorry my head's down. I'm just actually sending a very important email, okay? And then I'll give you my 100%. <laughs> Good to know that you're here with okay. us. On I'm with form. you. I'm with you. I'm so there. I'm so there in everything but this. this. Well, I tell okay. you why, while you're, while you're doing that, let us discuss, Trudy and myself, about what we're talking about today. No, yes. I'm here. Can I'm we, here. I'm here. Can it's we do done. That? I just had to forward it, okay? Just relax, people. God. <laughs> anyway, so today's topic is about reader groups on Facebook. Yes. So we just thought because there's like Wendy started one recently and I think I started mine at a very similar time. We just wanted to compare the two of them and how they'd worked in different ways um, or not worked as the case may be. Um, and then other reader groups that we're a part of and just whether you should be considering them or why not or why yes or, or whatever. So yeah. um there's a lot of chatter you see if somebody's not selling something um you know and they're talking about it on author forums often somebody will say and have you got a reader group and yeah. it, it's becoming much more part of I, it the, wasn't though was it no it wasn't it, you know like it was quite a random thing and i always mm. i always sort of aligned it with traditional publishers people that were traditionally published. oh really reader groups yeah really? yeah well, that's I interesting just, I, I don't have that assumption either at but all. then i've not never been a person who's been involved in reading groups yeah you know i, I don't follow my favorite readers and things i like always that. associate it with probably traditional but just huge authors you know like yes. the yeah that maybe that's yeah. more it. just yeah, yeah, yeah. real big ones i mean yeah. i follow but they're all indies of several authors and reader groups and i um and they're all sort of urban fantasy style ones and i kind of almost did it accidentally and it's now quite fascinating to me to kind of mm. go in there and when they do it well, like when they're asking, I think the biggest thing is like when they ask a question and you've got like something burning that you have to say, like whether you drink yeah. alcohol before five or not, or something like that, then you have to answer it. And yeah, anyway, I think, I nice. think it's also what you have to realize as a reader group, it gives you a foot in the door and it's quite a personal thing, but you also have to be ready for the questions that are going to come. You know, and, and and the more as time goes on, you know, why did you do this in this book, or when it, you know, like they can really have a have you quite confronting. Yeah, very confronting. Maybe so maybe we need to start from the beginning and okay, explain what that. a. Yeah. Let's start right back at the beginning and say, what is a reader group on Facebook? Mm -hmm. Who wants to answer yeah. that, Shah? <laughs> <laughs> Who wants well, to answer that, Shah? A reader group on Facebook is set up through your author Facebook page, but you have to use your personal profile in order to create a group so you click on the little right hand drop down menu and you'll see create a group and you can choose the settings whether it's publicly viewable to anybody that happens upon it or it can be available to read or to view through members only so people call them sites they're not a site it is just a, a group on Facebook that you can set the viewing to um, I would recommend you do it to members only mm. um, I don't understand it, why you wouldn't like um, why would you have a publicly viewable group I uh, not so much for authors but I'm in a couple of publicly available ones um, for like photographer group or uh, you know so or it's, gardening it's, or it's, yeah. But what's yeah. the so difference like, then between a, a group and a page if you can't make it exclusive like well, that? Well the, the theory behind a group is that Facebook has a better reach you, you actually get your posts seen more by mm. uh, via a group than you do a page you know. Okay and people can post there. in groups rather than yeah. not, and not in pages. Yeah. Yeah. yeah yeah and and as when you're setting the group up you can see it's certain so you can do ask questions for people to have to answer before they're admitted as a member you can um, select a custom url for it so you know you can choose the name of your reader group mm. you can um, put a moderation sort of there's different moderation levels one where anybody can post anything there's some where um, every um, every member's post has to be approved by the moderator sorry i'm just thinking thinking i'm just thinking yeah. <laughs> remember my to be settings approved. here yeah and they have yeah. to be approved i have on uh, the ones that i'm um a moderator on uh, uh, there you can have some keywords in there that are um when i say keywords trigger words that are flagged so as a moderator you get a little um alert um yep. of of you know whether it's bad language or whether it's you know coronavirus yeah. or whatever like you yeah. can you know 
Um, so there's quite a lot of controls you have, and I recommend when you're setting one up, the very first thing is to really understand what you're setting up. And, and it's yeah. all there, and it is very, it's um, pretty intuitive, but just take your time and go through it. Mm. And test it out before you start inviting every man and his dog to it. Just test it out with a couple of friends, invite friends, um, mm. and you just um, invite them, you like personal friends on Facebook and then and try it that way first and just, just make sure you've got all your kind of setting up how you want it to set up. One thing I've heard is using the questions to to your advantage, like yeah. asking questions that are useful to you as an author, like are you yeah. who is your favorite character? And then you find out the majority yeah. of people who come yeah. in with their because, favorite I character. Because I mean that or... does weed out the spammers because that's the thing. You need questions, otherwise you're gonna get a whole lot of bots that are joining and, and they're just trying to post their, you know, sale of their so or you get rabies. Yeah, that's exactly right. <laughs> or you get someone coming in who just is, is really not interested. They just come in and to cause trouble. Yeah. yeah. So and that see, can or and so the other thing I'd also uh, make sure that you have to, as a moderator, always approve members and not just have um, any member can approve people. I've seen that as well. So that happened to a group. Yeah. Where, oh, what was that? And I can't remember. And suddenly everyone's approving people that shouldn't have been in there, and it's a nightmare. So don't do that. Yeah. The, yeah. the other thing I had when I started mine up, I um I did have questions and then it was um and you could tell as a as the moderator or the admin I can't remember what I specifically was um whether or not they'd answer the questions and if I recognized their name and I knew that they were from a main mailing list which is where they mostly came from I just let them in if they didn't yeah. answer the questions I just figured yeah people aren't great at reading and sometimes too particularly depending on what device they're reading it on um, phones are notorious for not uh, mobile viewers notorious for not showing these questions easily so just it, nothing is foolproof but I would just you know going back to basics yeah, yeah. really understand what you're setting up cautious yeah. um, and, especially and, in the stone age yeah, absolutely. Uh, and, you know, you want to make sure that people understand those privacy or the public levels. If it's public, they need to understand that they're joining a public group. Mm. Uh, personally, if you're an author group, I'd set it up to members only viewing. Mm. Yeah. yeah. And so the next... on people's fa Facebook feeds, what they post in there. Yeah. That's why. yeah. So it's private. I think that's the best thing. Like keep it. I keep agree. It, and it makes it a little bit more exclusive. People feel like they're part of something. They're part of a tribe. It's exactly. not open to everyone. I just think yeah. that's a nicer kind of way to do it. So yeah. the next yeah. thing Absolutely. that comes to mind for, um, Facebook groups is you know they always have that disclaimer up the top you know like or how to behave as part of this group you know yeah. there's no bullying yeah. and rules. there's, there's always nice. a set of rules yeah. yeah so what kind of things do we include in that so in the rules so Facebook do actually provide some default rules now that they didn't use to um, I confess I had made some up from different groups that I've set up for author clients and and pretty much use the same things you know um but you need, particularly as an author, you need rules around spoilers. You know, any new releases coming yeah. up, you need need sort of some guidelines around that. But remembering, again, that people will join, yeah, 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 I've read the rules, and then promptly forget just them. Just forget them. <laughs> so, well, not even read the rules. I'm a bit like that. I would just, oh, yeah, yeah, whatever, and just yeah, don't read the rules. Right. So assume just that assume they're... that people don't read them. The other thing you can do just to reinforce things is create a cover picture, just like you would a Facebook um page cover and and have have them on there as well like in a bullet yeah. point you know small like no spam blah 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 you know yeah um and that's another way of doing it yeah you used to be able to pin posts now you can't they're described as announcements mm -hmm. which um makes them again a little trickier to find for people you can have um the other thing with groups is people can upload files so it can be documents and images and that kind of thing so if you think of it as like a, it's a it's a room off Facebook and that you can close the door behind it, but you can have different, you know, yeah. more things. So at, at what stage in your author career should you have one? I mean, if you were just starting out and you had one book and you just published it a month ago and, you know, um, you thought about it, I mean, would that be a good time? Personally, I don't think it would be, but because no. who would you get in there? No, you know, okay. I think you're better to nurture your author Facebook page, uh, you know, and, you know, the, the profile, author profile page. Um, and then once that starts to get traction and you, mm -hmm. your sales yeah. start to grow, you know, yeah. then I you think would it's do it. like everything's success begets success. And I think you need a certain level of sales and success and, and notches. I was going to say notches on the belt, but that's not the analogy I wanted. No, at all. Wins on no. the board before you notches set up a Facebook group. Um, <laughs> yeah. 
yeah, yeah. I, just, I mean I the other... absolutely do not think it's one for a beginning author I really don't but why also what invest about... your time in that yeah go go what Trudy, about go. if it was like a um they call them passion pages but not quite that but like if, if it was a group about so if it was urban fantasy and it wasn't in a page for Trudy J urban fantasy it was uh, or Trudy J the author but if you did like a group that was kind of like these ones that are urban fantasy fans unite and things like that like setting up something like that as a beginner author do you think that's worthwhile or we just I think it can take I mean, if, that's, if, that's, if that rings your bell go for it but remembering yeah. that that's going to take out your yeah. time and energy for that and it's not going to lead to sales bottom line it's not not really mm. and then you're kind of it's a little bit of switch and bait because people would join that and expect to be reading about lots of other people's books and that mm. then when you try and pump your own it can actually turn around and bite you on the butt so I think yeah. you're better off personally mm. you know um just focusing on your own and waiting a little I bit into so. your career until Absolutely. you've got a few more I just um, I think you need a certain level of sales and by certain level I mean you frankly you need to be making a solid part-time or full-time income before it's actually worth and just time out there you know like your your name becomes yeah. people under see your name and go oh you know I know her I've seen her books you know mm. to, to just throw something up there it's like oh what and also they read a, or you know and also people it's the old visibility thing and if you you know sure you might set this group up and you might twist the arms of you know 100 people to join it but if people aren't engaged and and they're not going to be seeing posts that you know it's the old story you, you're you not going to get any traction with it so just yeah. don't beat your head against the wall just yeah. just wait a bit personally because they can be a real time suck and that's something that I noticed when I very first started mine which is only recently is that I was like a bit rabid about oh I need to go and post in there but what you you know you need the people in there who will engage so that yeah. it's not your job it's it's their time and they want yeah. their space you know they want to it's, interact and chat it's kind of for super fans is how i think about yeah. facebook groups yes. it's kind Absolutely. of like a way to engage with those fans who are extra keen on your yeah. books rather than yeah. it's not a place to find cold um readers who've never read a book of yours before nice. so if you want it to be someone who's like read everything you've got and they want to know when the next one like i had someone joined and went oh my gosh i can't believe i feel like i've got the golden ticket wendy's got a reader group you know like you want that that that's what you want. You want that sort of engagement level. Yeah. And can um, I just point out that you've been publishing for seven years? Yeah. And I had, I had never thought, even thought about going down that track to be for until the last sort of year or so, mm. um, because I write two genres and it was always going to be difficult. Mm. Going so let's talk you. about, let's, can we, oh, have you got something more to say? No, I don't know. I was just going to say, yeah. She was just going. She was just going. I was um, agree with everything. Yeah, awesome. of course because <laughs> I was just gonna say let's let's talk about it because I started a group maybe a month before Wendy and then Wendy started her group and that we're and we've had very divergent paths on the success rates of our groups so let's talk a little bit about that so Wendy when did you do you remember how long ago it was you started I can't remember um, like beginning maybe, of yeah March no May? not that long I probably yeah about May maybe yeah. May June something like that yeah. and you know I'd put it off and put it off and put it off because to me and I don't mean this to sound that I'm ungrateful to have super fans, but I felt like it was going to be more work. And I already had, you know, this Facebook page and I already had this and this and the podcast. And there was just, it was just another thing to add. Mm. And then I just thought, well, it's almost like an email newsletter to a degree because you've just got that one-on-one -on -one contact with those super fans and they are the ones who really should be rewarded for being a super fan and so I thought well maybe if we run something and and, and we'll see how we go so I think yeah. we're sort of probably close to a 200 now 180 and that. Yeah. Um, it, it's not a massive group by any stretch of the imagination but you know they'll post it's quite often they'll they'll post and engage their own you know what are you counting on your finger for so I was just counting so you said it's not a big group and I was like literally you've been going for five months like actually yeah. it's a like I yeah, don't no, know no, no. I look are, I but... like I like it I think it's great um and so to start with I was a little bit manic posting every day and rah, rah, rah. but like Shah said to me it's it's actually not you, you don't need to post every day and it's better if you don't because they then start posting and engaging and stuff like that so I'll run a poll so like I <clears throat> decided to run a poll on my favorite series the Sinclair Raven series and I went in and I said okay let's see who's everyone's favorite heroine hero and so I put two names and every day I would take the winner and then put it to the next and they love that sort of stuff because it's like it's it's talking about what their passion they love what they mm. like to read so um I think 
I like it because it, them and it's asking yeah, their opinion. you know that sort of side of it um and you know um, people like Shara and my daughter Sophie they'll go in and do something in there and engage and stuff um and and, and you know I'll just it, it's a place I think that you can go and you can be really open you know like I can go into there if I want to and go oh man what a week you know rah, rah, rah. but I would never do that on my public page mm. because where I've got you know a thousand a few thousand people but this is like a little group of people who will go oh yeah you know and I'll say to them once a week how's everyone's doing is everyone okay you know and we've had a few people in there that have had COVID and, and stuff like that so it's just more familiar uh, and actually it's a it's a really lovely to have it because they just they want to be there you know yeah. and I want to say that Wendy you're actually really good at creating that community feel like I was really impressed so you did I remember the videos that you do um, I don't yeah, think you've done one done in it. a wee while I haven't actually I should do one I will yeah um, but those are I really want, engaging yeah and, and I will and, go live when I'm brave enough I haven't done that yet um yeah. and also a lot of bravery to do because lives. we're in New Zealand it's yeah, also the there's that time you know yeah, issue that makes it tricky. um so yeah I do a few videos now and again and, and chuck those up and, and mm. things like that but um yeah I mean they don't even want to be rewarded they're just they just like a place to go to chat and they're, they're not in there all the time like I'm not in there all the time you know it's also about asking them like you, you're great mm. about asking them like how's everyone going today or yeah. what's everyone reading at the moment this is what yeah. I'm reading what are you reading and it's about yeah. kind of just kind of and it's the it's the constant like you're continually putting stuff content up there like it's not just yeah, yeah, I try to, you know, a few times a week, I'll, you know, I go, I always go in every day, but I'll only chuck up now and again. Mm -hmm. um, and, and you know, like, it's not, you get it, the odd one that you, that is a bit of a pushback and you think, hmm. you know, like, it, it can be, they ask you, they'll ask you the questions they probably wouldn't ask on a Facebook, on, on an author page, they'll, they'll ask you the hard questions. Um, and, and that's, you know, that's good to know. That's good too, to be honest, because it is an open place. I want people to feel like they can say what they want in there within reason you know mm -hmm. um but no it's good i don't mind it i think the um just on the fact that um sophie and i both are moderators and i'm on a moderator of a number of different well a couple of different author groups um and i think you can decide how you're going to do it from the start as well and i would say as an indie author probably that people are there because they want the connection with the author themselves and so the you're less likely to get good results from a moderator posting you know even you're saying hey wendy's working you know wendy's in the writing cave at the moment so here's this but you always get less um result from from anybody else posting rather than wendy herself mm. Um, and I'll talk about it's the closer, other groups isn't moderate. it? It's, 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 it's like closer. the distance thing. It's like there's the page is a little bit more distant from the author yes. versus the group is like you really are. close. So and that's, that's the connection they expect. That's kind of connection, but it can also be a very much a double edged sword. And I think if you're a writer that is. Um, I don't want to use the word easily swayed, but, but that's all I can think of at the moment. Sensitive. Sensitive to pe other people's opinions and also um, kind of storyline suggestions as well like that can be quite uncomfortable for some authors to have these people that become very very engaged with their series and they demand that this character does xyz or marries xyz and and i think you what you don't want to do as an author is get into a point where you're constantly defending your work because then it, that that just completely takes away so so you just have to kind of have some boundaries i think in your head before you go down this track it's, and i'm not meaning to be scary but but this is just what it's like basically what you've done is you've opened up your house <laughs> yeah. and invited all these people over and you know not everybody behaves great or some people have different levels of of um brashness or assertiveness so yeah. you just have to think about how you will handle that i've been really lucky to be fair I, right the way through really i haven't had too much no and um, i think push back on anything no. um but i also that's because of what i write it's what i think i write. don't write that anything dark really yeah you know and i think so with you know traditionally my readers are in the upper scale of um age you know mm. so I, I think that's another thing as well i mean we have but i had both because i do contemporary and they're, they're the younger but everyone seems pretty polite and well mannered to be yeah, fair yeah yeah and, and I, I also I, you got those readers through your newsletter so they're already yeah. liking your work rather yeah. than putting a, a public call out if you like you know yeah. that can also um, but yeah. numbers when you start getting up into the the thousands and the tens yeah, of thousands tough. of people it's a lot 
I'll talk about that later. <laughs> yeah. So we'll talk about my my saying. Yeah, yeah let's talk about you. Now let's talk about me. It's all about me, right? Oh, and so then let's can... talk about you. It's always so, so I started my group about the same time as Winnie, maybe a little bit before. And I immediately kind of got like did the same thing. I, I put a call out to my newsletter and said, who wants to come and join me in the, and I call it the dragon's lair, the Trudy J's dragon lair or dragon's lair. That was already a problem because I don't know where the apostrophe goes and whether I should add an S. But anyway, um, so right from the start, it was problematic. And I immediately got about 85 people came in and, and were all excited. And that was great. And I was super yeah. excited and I was posting a little bit. And then I and then I stopped. And then I just stopped posting because I was busy and I had other things going on. And I I and then I, and then I'd go, oh no, I better go post something. And then out of the blue, after like a month of not posting anything, I randomly posted a few things and got all excited and and then I stopped again and didn't post anything. And then I was watching Wendy and her group look at all her amazing posts and I said, damn it, I need to go and post some more. And then I and then I'd forget about it for a while. And yeah, so my dad's group is pretty much dead. Um, <laughs> So don't the go to my group. Are dead. The dragons are dead. <laughs> um, so I just think, and the, the main thing that I think, unless people just hated me and thought, "Oh my God, who is this no, person?" Was oh, I'm sure just, that's what it was. Yeah, yeah, I know. Um, <laughs> was, I just didn't. Put, idiot. Uh, I didn't put con- consistent. Um, regular content up on the group and it didn't but consistency that kind of mate that is that yeah. is what in a nutshell and and that's the different that's you know like I don't. I try not to take on too many things that I can't do yeah, because yeah. my brain just doesn't take them. And, and, and I, whereas you can take a lot on in your brain because you're a very sharp cookie, but it's the consistency of keeping mm. them going. It's the consistency. And I, yeah, it's and I like hadn't growing done it. anything, including a garden. You, you can't just plant the seeds. Yeah. You've got to be out there watering, yeah. weeding, you know, it's, mm. and it's, yeah. it's just the same. So, so if you're someone so be ready for the you commitment. might, yeah, I yeah. Said, just what I was going to say, you, you've got to be sure that you can actually post, um, at, I would say at least sort of four times a week. Is that too many? I don't know. What do you reckon? Three? How um, many times? I don't oh, think you need. That? Are you more than that? Sometimes. Because I was yeah. thinking daily, but you told Wendy, Wendy not to do when, daily. When, when Wendy started off, she was doing daily and then, yeah. um, I'm back now yeah. to probably, I probably every other day, but then they, every other day. someone will go in there and post something. Okay, you know, so most days well. you've got something posted in there. Okay. Yeah, I try to um, interact and, you know, that sort of side of that, like that. I think that's important. Um, can you schedule it, stuff? I feel like I try. Yeah, you can. And put it, you can. can. Okay. Yep. So maybe Absolutely. I'm just can. going insane. Yeah. Yep. So, and I think another thing to think about is like, for example, I think for me, I was like, okay, it's the Dragon Lear. I'm going to post content about urban fantasy and other things. And, and I don't, I, that's it, mate, you're overthinking it. Yeah, and I think watching your one was really interesting for me because you were just like, what are you reading today? And yeah. how are you all going? Like it was a yeah. much, it was sort of more about them and and more about the, like they're all readers, like they're interested yeah. in reading. And I kind of forgot that. I was trying to be too clever almost. And I just. You can't, it is easy to overthink it. And to start with, I did. Uh, now I don't. I just, you know, um, I'll just go and I don't overthink it at all now. I'll just go in and chuck up something that said, you know, how's your day going do you love chocolate and pizza which I do or you know like mm. I think it's almost like it would it's, it's almost like sitting down and chatting to a friend and I think that's mm. something that's the different mindset from being on that other page where mm. all these people see it and it can be shared or whatever this is like a, just a little sit down for tea or whatever with friends yeah, yeah. and that's yeah. the way to yeah. look at it it's a little bit gentler um, yeah like that but Mm. It, it requires presence and yes you can schedule but you still need to be in there commenting on people's comments kind of thing mm. and that kind of yeah. you know it is a conversation yeah. and I know as an, a reader so from my perspective as a reader and I'm in a couple of so I'm in seeing Crawford Crawford's group and I was in KF Breen's group I don't even know if she's still posting there now but and they were really good and that it wasn't even it wasn't even that I needed them to be saying anything particularly clever it was still like oh my god she's talking to us kind of the minions you know we're just so excited yeah that she's in there and saying something and we're talking to her directly. Although I do think that the ones that are better are where you're asking opinions. Like you're saying, there's a, here's a post about, like there was one that I filled out the other day. I don't know why I fill these things out, but it was just like, you just feel like you're a part of something and you read everyone else's answers and then you have to put your answer in. And it was something mm. like, and, and the question was your version of this. It was like, how do you like your eggs? How do you drink your alcohol? What kind yeah. of hot drink do you have? and 
I can't remember the others, but it was just like, and I literally was like, oh, scrambled and I don't drink alcohol <laughs> and I don't drink hot drinks. And then, and, you know, like I was yeah. just kind of. I was, I'm exactly the same. If I see yeah. something like that come up, I'm like, I'm so all over that. Food, yeah. food. People yeah. can always talk about food. Yeah. yeah. So it's all yeah. favorite pizza toppings or, yeah. okay, who here likes Hawaiian pizza, which yeah. we know that everyone in America thinks is insane. So, yeah. you know. Exactly. Yeah. And my daughter yeah. want anything else, Hawaiian pizzas. But anyway, yeah, so I, that's, to be, that's all I'm saying. Like, it just has to be, it doesn't have to chat. be complicated. Yeah. But just, you can also sit down before you start and, and just get some posts. Get some things rolling in your head so you don't go every day, oh, I haven't posted mm -hmm. on that and I haven't posted on that. It, it becomes too much. It's too much of a burden. So sit down and have a look what other people are posting, see what their interactions are. Go to your own Facebook page, see what posts have you get got the best interaction from that sort of thing mm. I think is, is gold going yeah. into it yeah I think that's a really good idea plan out the first two months yeah. almost like as many yeah. possible um posts Post as you can possibly yeah. get. and I think going into other authors Facebook groups and watching them and like even stealing a few of their posts and like not literally yeah. word for word but the idea behind it mm. and just yeah. and use that in your own um in your own groups and, and you just have to, to remember content. too like it's about your voice because quite often you can go into another Facebook group um, and I'll bring, I'll say Lucy Score, who's one of my absolute favorites and I, but hers is like this beast. It's massive and all the readers just interact with each other and do most of the posting and she comes in most days as well. Um, but um, it's, it's, it's. I think it's important that it's in your like if I went in and started to post all raunchy, sexy stuff and rah, 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 it would so not be me. Mm -hmm. you know so yeah. make sure the tone fits your author tone which is what's yes. on your facebook page on your email newsletters on your books everything absolutely has to be you know yeah, yeah. yeah and that's absolutely. and lucy's that's i think what she's really good at she's got this kind of fun um vibe that she's she's just yeah. got it she's just she's very person. good she's and very she's good highly recommend her yeah. group as an example mm -hmm. of how an author communicates as well as you yeah know, yeah um, Wendy's of course but yeah another example of an author who did like, I think did really well at that is is KF Breen mm -hmm. she's got a and she's like all sweary and angry <laughs> but she wor it works for her because what does she, she write? writes she writes urban fantasy and you know yeah. those those real snarky kind of hardcore kick-ass kind of yeah. female characters and that's and so she's almost she comes she used I mean the thing is that she she decided she didn't like Facebook and so she made the decision to actually move her her Facebook group off off Facebook and onto another online community yes. and and I don't know how that's gone for her but me personally I I signed up to the community and I sort of occasionally get these emails notifying me of stuff but I just don't go in there because yeah taking it off Facebook I'm, I'm in Facebook for other reasons and then I happen yeah. to see the groups and they happen to come up in my feed yeah and I think you have to be a really big name author to be able to pull off and a really your... staunch fan to go there yeah yeah, that's um, yeah I, I just don't see how she could that group that she's created offline could possibly be as strong as it was when it was on yeah. Facebook but she yeah. just was really cool when it was on Facebook she'd be swearing and she'd be telling people off and not putting up with anything and, and everyone lapped it up they loved it because that was that kind of character that they loved to read in the books mm -hmm. was kind of reflected in her kind of the way that she yeah. um talked and yeah, I, yeah yeah so that was great yeah but I think that's important. It's important that the voice is the most important thing, to be fair. Mm -hmm. I mean, they read your books, they have an understanding of you, they've followed you on your Facebook page, so they think they've got another understanding of you, and then you go into a personal group, and they want that same person to follow you in there. They want to be going in and getting the same sort of content and, you know, feedback. And that's where I think it can work, because basically, authentically, you is writing authentic books. Yeah. I think where it wouldn't work, for example, if you're writing under a different... Um, a pen name yeah. that was a different sex for example you know that would be very difficult I think running a Facebook group and maintaining yeah. another persona um uh, yeah absolutely and, I totally agree with and, that and I think too like you say the most important thing if you went in there and started swearing like okay a friend in your group you would completely alienate all those readers like it's it's yeah. you've got to it's Wendy, got to be yeah. authentic if and Wendy consistent yeah, yeah sorry with Wendy. even though I do use the occasional cuss word in my contemporaries well, Wendy's, yeah, well, you are I the low, the you are the, the the weakest link in terms of I, on the I am the one in this group when we load this podcast yeah. occasionally I am the yeah. one in the spargo is that swears the most I, I put my hand up to that all um, those years on rugby fields we oh it's... yeah teenage <laughs> boy and girl and yeah <laughs> it's all it's all there plus a husband who swear who can swear like a true as well no, and always has i think it's you that's 
I, you know, yeah, it's you. You, you like to blame everyone else. I, I was raised in a very <laughs> correct and proper British family who never swore. If I swear in front of my parents now, I still get a roasting. Oh, yeah, so no. it's definitely not from them. So talk but anyway. about your two different subgenres. Yeah. That's another mm-hmm. thing. So a lot of people do write two different subgenres. So yeah. can they combine it under the one reader group? What do you think? <coughs> um, <coughs> I'm going to speak. I'm going <laughs> to speak, Trudy, because she <laughs> asked me. Fine. Actually, it was a global <coughs> question. But okay, right. it was a global question, but I'm going first. No, you go, Trudy. Go, go, no, go. No, you answer it. You demanded to answer. You answer. No, 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 no. I Look, I tell you what, that's what's put me off having a group for so long because I had the two different. But because my historical self predominantly so much more than my contemporaries, um, <clears throat> I thought, no, what, the heck, what? I'll give it a go. You know, I didn't say that word that I said. I didn't mm, swear then. It was good. Um, I pulled back. So what the heck, I thought, and I went for it. And to be honest, I did a bit of a poll and there is a, you know, I would say three quarters are historical, but they're both actually. And the crossover is what it is. And you'll have people in there go, oh, I actually prefer your contemporaries, but I will read your historicals. So I haven't really noticed that it's not worked for me. Had I written motorcycle gang books and yeah and Regency romances, then I would have never done it. Yeah. But because my two genres, even though they're very different, are, the books are very much the same. They're based on the same concepts of love and family and, and you know, that sort of thing. And there's a bit of suspense. So like I say, I think it depends on your genres. Mm-hmm. For me, it worked. And I think people are at that level in a group, people are there for the author yeah. because they love the author and it's about creating yeah. that connection to the author. And I think... And your voice is still comes through, whether it's your historicals or your contemporaries to a certain extent. Like I know you do slightly use different language in the historicals to the contemporaries, but it still is that kind of, like you say, that same feel, like it's about the family and the connection yeah. and the love and, and those kind of stories. And you do tell the sort of same sort of love story and, and things like that. So I, I feel like there's still a connection, even though. Yeah, I definitely, I, I totally agree, you know, mm-hmm. but if I was writing sci-fi, I wouldn't, you know, it and I think there's different there's things, precedent. you know. Yeah, there's precedent for like, you know, you think about all the, um, there's a lot of authors out there who write contemporary and historical, you know, yeah. like there, there are. The, they do, the, there are a lot. And so it's yeah. not unheard of. But if, you, as you say, if it was like sci-fi, yeah. romance. Me and, and Lisa Claypass, actually. Yeah, you and her yeah. buddies like yeah, this. Yeah, right, like tight. Like, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. So that's cool. So, um, yeah, I mean, if I, for me, for a tip for a new writer who's thinking about it, I, I would really say no. And I would say, put it off until you have got yourself completely organized. You know where you're going. You've got a reader fan base and you've got a really, you've built quite a strong following on your author page because there is nothing worse than starting starting something and no one comes. It's like having a party and no one coming. You know, it's yeah. not, it's not good for the confidence. And it's not, like I was nervous. I was really nervous about it. And I've been in the game for seven years which is not a huge amount of time but in writing terms it is but you know like I was nervous about who was going to come to the party but it, the thing about it is it's, it's the same as but if you've got a big new email newsletter and your Facebook page is running well then by all means I would go for it because then you can contact you put it in your email newsletter and those people will come over and then you can put it in your Facebook page and those but if you haven't got a base at all it's going to be it's not the place to start crickets in there mate and don't be like me and invite people to the party and then don't turn up yourself because that's a way yeah. to make them a bit annoyed no, at you for not turning up. What you did was you invited them to the party and you handed out some snacks and then you left. Yeah. And then the With a better crowd. Stopped, yeah. And they're like, and they're all the standing around stopped. going, this is awkward. Uh, hello. And then she just went off. She was that girl who went off with the oh. hot guy and never came back. <laughs> she was that girl. <laughs> I was that person. That was me. You were that person. So don't don't be me. Don't be a Trudy. Yeah. Um, so are there any other? So we've are there. So the main games of to having a Facebook group would be that you get closer access to your super fans. We yep. talked about reviews. Tell the story about the reviews. Yeah. I mean, I had a had a book out which was doing okay. It was reviewing okay, but I I just wanted to to get a few more on it. And all I did was went into the reader group and say, hey guys. If you've read the book and if you're happy to do it, I, you know, I would never push for anything no. like that. I would just say, I'd be grateful if you reviewed it and bam, they all, they just went, went for yeah. it. Yeah. Um, and I don't think that it was That's quite soliciting powerful. reviews. I don't think it was no. soliciting reviews. It was more of a, you've read the book. Hey, you know, yeah. I'm, yeah. I'm happy There's if nothing... you could. 
there's nothing you know. wrong and it's not soliciting anything there's nothing wrong with asking yeah. people who've read a review yeah. to do an honest i mean a read yeah. a book yeah. to do an honest review yeah. like that's, and that's not, something you have to get over i think well me personally that's just you who ne- <laughs> yeah <laughs> he never wants to put anyone out um mm. but you but you do you just you have to just bite the bullet and go you know would you review it and and yeah. more often than not especially if they're your super fans they just would be all over there yeah. they love like to, to do things, do things for, to you. for you yeah, yeah. Push, so yeah. just just a little side note here, and this is absolutely not I'm not what Wendy or anybody that we know is doing, but it has been done previously by some extremely large authors who are no longer publishing. That that um, we know of, that we have heard yeah. about, that there is disclaimer. This is in my opinion only. Um, what you can't do. Are is you covered say, your ass now? Just say it. <laughs> what you can't say is. Hey, leave a review, take a screenshot of the review and you win a, you know, or yeah, no, no, give you no. whatever, Something. you know, a diamond necklace. And for I, example. on that, you know, you can't yeah. do that. Okay. Mm. But you can do, hey, guys, I'm trying to get a book bub ad and I'd really appreciate, you know, I'd really help if I had, you know, a few more reviews. If you've got five minutes, super appreciate it you know it's all in the wording much. right it's all in the yeah. way you say it, it and really I, mean, is. I wouldn't be asking it every single week i think no what i've only done it once the old you know? story give more than you actually asking yeah. for back mm. on the um, note of giving on the yeah. note of giving i don't think it hurts to run a giveaway specifically yeah. for that reader group as well yeah. mm-hmm. like i've yeah. just done a big um release and giveaways and stuff like that and i while i did it on my author page i did mm special stuff just for the yeah. reader group and special stuff just for the email newsletter yeah they love that you know yeah, like exactly. i get these messages i mean foolish me i yeah i did um say that i would send something to macedonia of all places <laughs> uh which has cost me sort of i've taken a second mortgage out on the house for that but, <laughs> but basically they love it because it's just they're the only ones that can go for it it's their little treat it's like a yeah yeah i'm in here and this is my little thing you know but the risk of sounding mercenary, which that's fine. That's fine. Um, I just want to point out the reason why you want to make them happy and why you're you're sending them prizes to Macedonia. Yeah, I don't even know where that is actually. Mm. Um, is because it's that connection, right? You're creating the 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 super fans. And they're going to go and do stuff for you. So they're going to go buy your books immediately on yep. launch. It, they're going to talk. They're going to talk about your books to other people, other friends. I think that's going to more create important than anything. Word of I mouth. I'd much rather somebody talk about the book than actually buy the book. You know, yeah. they, if they're going to win the book or whatever, or read it yeah. in KU, way yeah. better to talk about it. I've never looked on print copies as part of my sales, no. which is probably wrong, but I never have. So for me, it's important that if I'm, I like to give away print copies because if it's sitting on their coffee table or on their bookshelf or somewhere, someone might see it, you know, yeah. and, and okay, maybe only one person, you know, or two people, but that's one or more sale or what, you know, like yeah. any well, avenue. Yeah, donate it to a charity yeah, shop. Yeah, you know, like. Know it's reaching yeah. out there. Out yeah, absolutely. In I don't want them donating my books to charity mm. shops, but I want no, them to get to I'm love them saying. and sleep with them under their pillow. But, but then but, someone might read, buy yeah. it from the charity yeah, shop, read it, love it, and buy all the rest of your books in the absolutely. series. Absolutely. Oh, look, I so totally get that. No, no, I love charity shops. Hell, are you kidding me? But it's important, I think, to reward them for being super fans yeah. uh, you know like it's just it's a really it's a big it's an important thing for you to do you know mm-hmm. um awesome. you know that's just the way i feel i'm just straightening my glasses because i can see they're crooked in the picture awesome. yeah oh, it's not yeah. not a good look so i've Sorry. just got a couple not to be a debbie downer but just a couple oh of other things yeah that you we need to think of something of. to end on a high because she's going to down yeah. us all she's going to no, down I'm us not going to down us all but it's just the reality of the situation so i um moderate a, a a new york times bestselling author who's traditionally published who's huge has got a massive following now their following is is very much international as opposed to more us yeah canada uk centric and that is quite a different feel in that group from others and and it requires a lot more moderation in that you've got lots of different cultures different um acceptability of language of um nudity of se- like all of that kind of thing and so just i think also understand your audience as well yeah. um and if you have got a very uh a readership that is quite widespread um i guess is how i'd use it 
really be mindful of that and really have some firm boundaries put in place by boundaries I mean rules and that kind of thing because you need to set limits Um, and you need to set limits for Facebook anyhow in terms of images that are shared like if you've got you know sexy fireman calendars you know sort of naked from the waist up kind of thing often that will be flagged and you can get your group can just be taken away by Facebook so so I would recommend that you have a rule that there is no nudity and no implied sex photo like people particularly if you're writing one of the kind of the hotter contemporary sexy type genres um a lot of those uh, readers love sharing you know cover mm. models or whatever but for your own sake in terms of the author you have to be careful about what's posted in your group because what you don't want is first of all your Facebook account, I'm not saying they're going to take your personal account away, but it can affect, certainly they can take your group away. I've seen groups just gone like that. Yeah. So you have to really put some rules in. So I'd say know your audience is really yeah. important. And again, that goes back to having a few years, I would say, down the track and if good sales. And then you'll get a feel just by going into your newsletter. Most newsletter providers will tell you what country that subscriber is likely to come from yeah. kind of thing and yeah. so good. get a feel uh, no, for that's it. a good that's good yeah at what you i mean i've been in groups that have not been i've been moderating groups that have yeah um kind of it's been very difficult and we've had to kind of pull a plug because at the end of the day the other really important thing to remember is whatever goes on in your group is a reflection of you okay. as an author and your author brand mm. and if you've got people infighting or if you've got all of that kind of thing that comes back to you you're the mm-hmm. you're the host of the party and yeah. you can say oh well I wasn't involved or whatever but it's very much a reflection of your brand and so it is important that you can I'm really what goes on in the I'm end. really sorry to those 85 people who I left yeah what a slack. Party. that was why I was one um, of them I was gutted yeah. and I went in there every day I and I just sat there like a little girl waiting <laughs> Waiting for I, thanks, Wendy. Coming. Thanks for making me feel better about that. Awesome. I'm just right, hoping there's another group out that, there that is survivors of Trudy J's Dragon <laughs> Lee group. You know, do you know what I'd abandoned. like to do? What I'd like to do is is and I've looked it up, but I haven't done anything. Is ways to revive a group that's died, and whether it's possible. Like if you've got this group and it's been sitting wow. there since May. And then how can I revive it? Can I revive it? Or if the algorithms yes, you just can. kind of And you just start posting in there regularly it. and it'll be away, mate. It's just like starting a Facebook page again. But do you think maybe there's like this algorithm thing well, on Facebook are. that says if it's the been around be. for a, a yeah. while and even if but she starts you posting, it's going to be But you can just revive it. Do not start a new group. Just start reviving that one. I know where you're going. I know what you want to do. I wasn't going to start happen. a new group. Don't you worry. get in there, girl, and start posting. Although I was, tell you what, Make me an admin. I'll go in there and post for you. Okay. Oh, my God. I'm taking you up on that you're totally doing that Wendy. <laughs> um so the other thing i wanted to talk about we didn't um there's one of the things is limited time groups so so yes. i think you've got a bit of experience with that Shard. so i have got a topic? limited time group so that's what how um with one of the authors that i work with the again because what we found this is what we found was um generally people can adhere to rules <laughs> and these are very very ardent um Super, super fans. Super fans. They can generally adhere to rules of the party for about three to four weeks. After that, things get a little loose. Delicious slip. And a lot of people, too, don't forget, belong to many, many groups. And so the rules become of each individual group get forgotten or whatever. And and behavior slips. And familiarity (laughs) does breed contempt i'm trying to work my way around this but what we found was doing a group for uh based around a new release in a particular series for a limited time so you know the book was coming out on the 15th of the month we would start it from the 10th of the month through to the following 10th spoilers were allowed so people would only join that group and on the questions i would always have do you understand that you know if you haven't read the book or you know spoilers it's allowed inevitably there would still be people complaining that they join the group and then they can't believe that people are spoiled their read you know so again even though people have read the questions and answered the questions sometimes things just don't sink in um but that worked well now there would always be cries of please leave it keep going because it's going so well and it was and it and they do but we know from experience now that for this particular fandom, 
um, that works out the best. And yes, it means setting up a new group every single time there's a new release, but because they're a traditionally published author, they have two new releases a year and, and that's how we manage it. From a marketing perspective, mm. the concept of it being a limited time group is actually yeah. kind of positive, I think. Like yeah, yeah kind absolutely. Of, you only have a short urgency period of time. Yeah, yeah, urgency. You have yeah. to be yeah. part of it. It's only yeah. going to yeah. be here for a little get while. Get in there now and talk yeah. about what you want to talk about yeah. and then you're going to get out. Yeah. And I mean, mm. and because mm. of their popularity, you know, we can go from zero to you know, several thousand in a, in a day members sort of yeah. thing. So, so it, it's on a, a different level to most indie authors and I would also say most indie authors their strategy isn't the same as traditional it's not around that two huge you know marquee releases a year so it's a different it's a completely different beast so yeah. when you're looking at an example groups to to look at of your favorite authors by all means you know if it's a, the traditionally published author follow them um and and join but know that there might be other things going on <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> that you know yeah. other strategies that may yeah. not necessarily apply to you as an indie yeah. um, and it's an enormous amount of work and I mean the author is is not participating in this group at all it's myself yeah. and the other assistant um, and it's very much for reader groups so it's like we've opened it we've set a party up in a marquee <laughs> yeah. but it's for the fans only and the author yeah. is not present yeah. That's um, interesting, actually. I didn't realize that. Yes, no, mm -hmm. and they're not. Okay. And and having seen some of these are ardent fans, but boy, people are, are very quick to tell the author about where they what? went wrong. Yeah. And yeah. I'm very glad that this author isn't in there because I think it would be no matter what your level of success, it's really hard to see people can be. I think it would be very difficult to to not let that affect you oh it's um, you think they say things though because they know that the author isn't no, in there i think i've seen the same things i think people a lot of people some people i think it's their right no filter yeah and they think and it's their right to say whatever they want I, but i also don't believe that they see an author as a real person they write these books and put them up but i, I don't think they think about the time that's gone into it and the effort and the emotion and that it's just like oh that you know it seems it, it yeah. feels as somebody and I mean obviously I'm protective because you know they're not only a client but they're a good friend and and so I I um I never comment because but but I've had to shut down because then it becomes very much then you have other fans coming in you know and defending um, yeah defending which is lovely but then yeah. it all turns into quite frankly a giant yeah soup of yeah. not nice stuff not so, nice. You, it, so there are, avoid that at all costs yeah, the other so. thing i would say is know the time zone of your yeah. where <clears> most <throat> people are living in um and that does make it tricky for for us here in new zealand because we tend to be you know um yeah. the opposite, opposite side of, of yeah, yeah. <laughs> the northern hemisphere particularly the u.s um time zones and so you need if you've got a group that's really fervent like that you need people that can um that can be awake be all, at the times that they are. The times that they mm -hmm. are. So I'm I'm talking not worst case scenarios because you know it's a good problem to have if you've got people yeah. you know, basically fighting over your stories. Yeah. But for most indies, it's a gentle, it's a it's a nice thing, it's a positive thing. But don't expect sales out of it. There are benefits, but they're not necessarily going to translate into financial sales. They might. They might add to your platform and thereby in a longer yeah. term kind yeah. of way create a, yeah. I would say it's a branding and, exercise more than anything honestly yeah, I feel like it's, it's a branding yeah. exercise yeah. and like it's, it's not it's not that it's you all the feels sales, too you know right? like yeah, I mean, I think having a group is, is about the feels, you know, like it's yeah. about, you know, you're giving back, they're giving to you, you're, you're yeah. getting the love, you know, like there's all those, uh, nice all of those, feel. yeah, it, like I said, it's just like having a bunch of friends sitting around chatting. Um, and I, and I think, yeah, I mean, I wish I'd done it earlier, but you know, that's just me. But on that note, are we probably cranking oh, on I wanna, to nearly wanna, an hour? Oh my God, really? Yeah. Yes. Okay. I indeed. just want to say one thing to, for us to end on. Can yeah. we each name one or two groups that author groups that we're a part of that we think are really good that people should go and sure. um, pay attention to? I'll go with Lucy at? Score. Yeah. yeah. And I'll go with Wendy Bell. <laughs> Okay, so you'll have to name two now because you both just... Oh, right. Them, okay. Um, you know another one? I'll like, be the Marie I'm, Force I'm, group. I'm in there. 
She's yeah, Elizabeth, I'm Elizabeth Phillips, although I don't know if she's part, she might be posting on a page rather than a group. She posts quite yeah. regularly. Yeah, yeah. I, don't, I don't know. Yeah, yeah I'm um, in Marie Forces reader group as well. Um, hmm. And so I, Trudy I J, I'm always in hers as well. But I wasn't but here, I'm but waiting. then she stopped talking to me. But I'm like that, that little cat at the window. <laughs> Oh, make her go away. The My drink's like. empty. The cheese platter's finished, and I'm standing at yeah. the party, and I've got yeah. nobody to talk to. It's just like you're that person in the corner with the drink, you know? Does you guys are embarrassing. It's high school you're over yourselves. again. Nobody's talking to me. You're just embarrassing yourself. You need to leave the party now. Oh, my God. <laughs> what about you, Trish? Who are left. your people? You need Jay, to move KF on Green, to who else? Okay, so, K, well, KF Green's not really in there anymore. No. Um that I'm aware of she might be there and I just don't pay attention um K and K uh, CM sorry CM Crawford has a really good one um Annette Marie has a really good one um Mackenzie Hunter there's a lot just of the people two. in just the in, two um, would have been enough you know I'm going to keep listing them now um <laughs> now that you said that no there's a lot of people in UF who seem to do um reading groups it seems to be well they lean it lends except, itself except a little bit to it yeah yeah no but yours is there buddy okay pe- here it is people <laughs> Stay tuned because we are going to hype that bad boy up. No, we're and not. It's gonna Here's be what great. we're going to do. We're going to find Trudy because this can be a way around the pressure of managing it all yourself is actually two authors go in together and do a joint reader oh, group provided yeah. that they're writing the same genre and they're writing the same heat levels and that can work you know you can mm-hmm. do a tag teamy thing so here. not you and me then trudels okay because we're like oh wait oh no i think your historical romance authors will love my urban <laughs> fantasy dragon shifters i just i just don't see the problem <laughs> and before this deteriorates too far <laughs> yeah let us be honest we should wrap it up you know Okay, so come find us at spargirlspodcast.com and let us know about your reader groups or what reader groups you what love. Works, we what doesn't. Want, we yep. want positive things on our Facebook page because yep. we're here to support authors. Yep. Um, so come along. Not that we Spargirls generally have Podcast. negative stuff. No, we don't normally. But no, yeah. no, no, but I no. just don't want people saying, here's how not to do a reader group and, yeah. <laughs> and tag mm. the author. <laughs> Yeah. Oh, please no no please don't author. do that no okay <laughs> awesome thank you so much for listening to another episode of the spa girls podcast we will see you all again next week Bye-bye. bye bye